Any other advice and tips you want to give out to the people out here? Yeah, um, particularly around, um, you know, it's great to save money, but, um, you know, everybody gets excited about talking about investments, right? Yeah. Um, when, when you talk about investments, it, it's, you have to really be, uh, be mindful of, you know, where you get your advice when it comes to investments. Because if you listen to the mass media, right, back in March, the mass media, well, everybody knows, right, the, the stock market took a huge dip in March of this year, right? Yeah. Now, if you were listening to the media at the time, Bartu, would the media have been saying, um, hey, this is a great time to get into the stock market? Or would they say, hey, you know, don't put any money into the stock market right now. It's, it's down 30%, stay away. What would the mass media be telling folks? What I remember them saying, everybody, you know, the big companies saying, get out, sell, 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 avoid the market at the moment. Right. Now, the greatest investor of our lifetime, Warren Buffett, he's, he has a number of sayings, right? And one of those being, be, be fearful when everybody is excited and be joyful or greedy when everybody is fearful. So I would much rather follow the advice of somebody who's one of the richest men in the world, right? If he's telling me, if his philosophy is that I should be buying when the market goes down at any rate, right? If that's his advice, I'd much rather take the, a billionaire's advice than some journalist who's you know on the on CNBC or something saying don't buy right now. Like I'd be, I'm hopping in with both feet uh, when it was down at down thirty percent off of its all time highs uh, in the S and P and Dow Jones Industrial Average. Like those are the most opportune times to buy. Like even today, like you and I were talking before the call here, like when the market is down by a substantial amount on a given day, you never want to buy at all time highs. That means like when everybody is excited about the stock market, like Bitcoin, like a couple of years ago, right? People were like all excited about Bitcoin because it was like an eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000. And then all of a sudden it crashed. Well, you never buy at all time highs. Don't buy when the market and everybody is feeling all, has this euphoric feeling. You want to buy on days like this when the Dow Jones Industrial Average was down more than 850 points this morning. Those are the days that you want to buy. Uh, so don't, don't be so quick to follow the masses in whatever it is. Um, you know, always inform yourself. And I tell my clients this also, always inform yourself. Don't just take my word for it. Um, you know, go and inform yourself, take, you know, do your, do your own research. Now, when you come back, it's going to be my job to educate you a little bit more because you probably have, you know, went out here and saw some stuff that, you know, probably has no bearing whatsoever. Uh, but always inform yourself. Um, you made a couple of good points. Because I remember when Bitcoin was on fire and everybody was like, yo, buy in, buy in, get on Bitcoin right now. Um, I'm glad I didn't take that jump into it. And it's like, it's never been this high. It can only go up. Yeah. And then shortly after, it went down there. We're like, man, I'm losing my money. I'm like, ooh, I'm glad I avoided that. You know what I'm saying? Dodged the bullet, man. Yeah. But I get what you're saying now with buying at a low, like because the market is crashing, like great companies right now are on sale or right. they will call a sale, a discounted rate, because they're not at their highs. And we all know that they're gonna be around for another 100 years. So if you right. buy them now and ride that wave back up, that's right. nothing but profit. That's right, that's right, man. And if, and then, you know, a lot of people think that investments or investing in general has to be something that's really complicated. And really, if you look at the most successful investors, um, you'll see that they have a very simple strategy. They buy when everybody else is fearful and they sell when everybody else, you know, has this feeling of euphoria. So um, it, don't, don't get it twisted that you have to have some sophisticated investment strategy. Your investment strategy can be very simple uh, and you can be very successful. I got a question for you, speaking about investment strategy. You know, mm -hmm. Starting off, 
Um, I got into investing starting off with a very simple strategy, which was uh, buying a S&P 500 ETF, and that way it covers the board and just keep putting money into that monthly or whenever my increments was. And that was like the whole investment thing. It was like, there was no need to start off with trying to get individual stocks as a beginner, which is like start an ETF. Yeah, uh, I think that's great advice because uh, investing can seem very overwhelming and, and very, uh, very confusing to a lot of people. And buying an ETF or an ETF stands for exchange traded fund or, or an index fund. Um, and by doing that, you you kind of take the guesswork out of it because if you're buying into an index that owns f 500 of the world's most industrialized companies, right? Yeah. The, the margin for error is very small because while some may be doing very well, some may not be doing so well. So it kind of balances things out, right? Mm -hmm. and so buying something like uh, an index fund uh, that tracks the S&P 500 or a particular sector, um, is going to be good and, and it simplifies your investment strategy tremendously. Appreciate it, appreciate it. So what's your feeling on buying, so you're talking about investing, buying individual stocks? Um, a, a lot of people, you know, at least novices, they, they want to go out and they want to buy the penny stocks, right? And, you know, because they're thinking, oh, I'm, this is going to be the next big thing. Um, I don't buy or I don't buy or advise people to buy uh, anything under um, basically $25. Like it, it has to meet a certain criteria for me if I'm going to put my money in it. Like it has to trade at least a million shares and um, it also has to be at a certain price point. Uh, and, and I got this information from, this is not my own stuff. I wish I was that brilliant to come up with these uh, these things on my own. But this just comes from a lot of research and a lot of reading and, of course, a lot of experience. You know, I've been in the industry for 12 years now. So um, a, a great book to reference is How to Make Money in Stocks. Uh, the author of the book is William J. O'Neill. Um you can get it on Amazon or whatever, but it has some great principles in there to follow um, when it comes to, uh, you know, the fundamentals that you want to look for in a company and to invest in a company. But don't buy cheap stocks. I mean, you want to buy strong, strong companies that have a strong track record of success. A lot of people get in trouble because they want to be the next great investor and think they're buying the next great thing and only to find that, you know, in a matter of months, that company goes on the water and is never to be heard from ever again when they could have just bought Apple or something. And, uh, you know, everything is, everything's going to be okay. I, well, nothing is hundred percent in the stock market. Let me not say that, uh, but is, is a higher probability of success over the long haul with Apple versus some fly by that company. Yeah, definitely understand. Definitely understand. Someone starting off, all right, they get their first ETF. <clears throat> How many individual stocks do you think they should start with if they want to start getting to like more of an advanced level? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's another good question. Uh, and, and here's my response. It will be based on, and again, this is not Terry Scipio. I wish it was, you know, my brilliance that came up with this stuff. But again, reference in the book, how to make money in stocks. Uh, if you have a small account, meaning if you only have, say, $3,000, you don't think, of, and just, and this makes good sense because if you think about it from a practical standpoint, if you have just $3,000 to invest, mm -hmm. Would it make sense to buy three different companies and break it up into thirds? So buy a thousand dollars worth of Apple, buy a thousand dollars worth of say Tesla, or buy a thousand dollars worth of some other big company, right? Would it make sense to divide that money up amongst three different stocks, or would it make better sense to concentrate that money into one particular stock? Because now you can get what I call a meaningful amount of shares because there's not going to be a whole lot of diversity or a diversification that's going to happen with $3,000, right? You, yeah. You're not going to be able to buy a, a ton of different, a 
a, a basket of stocks that's going to provide some ultimate diversification. If you have $3,000, you'd be better off buying an ETF or something. And this is my opinion again, uh, buying an ETF or buying uh, shares into a strong company like a Boeing who's at like, based off its highs from earlier this year, I think Boeing was trading at like upwards of $350, $350 per share. You can, you can buy it today for like $149. It was been that low this morning, like $149.50 or something like that. Um, to me, you got to ask yourself, and when you invest in, here's another thing that I'll add. Like, if you're going to invest in a company, right, and you're thinking about putting your hard-earned money to work, here's a couple practical things you should ask yourself. Will this company be around in the future? Are they innovative? Meaning, if if we see that the world is getting away from um, uh, non-renewable energy sources such as oil and gas and all that stuff, and and making a more shift towards uh, clean energy like solar, wind, and all that stuff, you know, does the company play in that space? And is the company selling at a discount right now? Like Boeing is selling at a huge discount. I would bet my bottom dollar that in the next five years, whenever this pandemic and whenever they announce a vaccine or so, I bet you, I bet my bottom dollar that Boeing is going to have some very you know bright days ahead off of this hundred and forty nine dollar low. I would I would venture to think that at some point they will get back to three hundred and fifty dollars plus per share. So you basically saying buy at a discount, which is this right? Boeing going from three fifty to one fifty. And then holding for multiple years, the long-term investment, not something quick. Yeah. If you, I mean, investing is not a get rich quick, despite what everybody thinks. I mean, you can buy the, you know, the penny stock that, you know, goes to a hundred dollars overnight, but that's highly unlikely. Um, and I wouldn't, you know, advise, you know, anyone to do that and speculate with that, you know, with the penny stock, but invest in wise investments, are held for an extended period of time. And it, I mean, because the, the stock market shows that if you hold over a 30 year period of time, you're gonna have more, more years where you gain than years that you lose.